swings by, but it's coming at an oblong orbit. Is that correct, Gil? Correct. It has a meteoratic orbit because there's too many things that are influencing its orbital uh, speed because it can run into moons or other planets. That's why Ceres was destroyed. That's why we had three days of darkness during the exodus instead of during Yeshua's sacrifice. We only had three hours of darkness during during a, a um, crucifixion during the eclipse. Now, question. Any, oh, any, wait, 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 wait. Any wait. time you see in the Bible a double eclipse, that can't be done in the natural. Right. It has to, it has to involve a third object. Okay. Now, having said that, you're saying that Planet 7X could have caused Hezekiah's son, uh, son to go back 10 steps. That Planet X could have came by and caused Joshua's longest day. You're saying that it, Planet X could have been the reason that we had three days of darkness during one of the plagues of Egypt during the Exodus, the time of Moses, before he could get the children of Israel out of Egypt. And you're saying that Planet 7X, also coming by again, but coming by on the other side, could have created a double a double eclipse which could have caused the earth to go dark for three hours when Christ was on the cross. And you went back and checked that against uh, statistical information or recorded data by ancient uh, civilizations in China and other places, and they confirmed something was going on in the sky during the exact same times of those four major biblical events. So it's not just a theory here. You're basing your theory of 7X on factual biblical accounts that, and scientifically, as an astronomer, you're saying, and it is doable, Paul, and here's how it's doable. If there is an object that keeps making its way around toward this earth, it always keeps, and each time it creates something. Like in Jonah's day, it created a sign in the heavens for 40 days. Jonah preached, hey, look, look at the sign. Nineveh, you're going to be destroyed in 40 days, okay? So each time you're saying this Planet 7X could create those events. Well, well Paul, let me quote a famous astrophysicist, okay. Neil De, it's a great Python, okay? He okay. said, this is how, this is science. He says, if you can take observe phenomenon in space and show that it's repeatable in a model, that that is science. That means it's following the... Orbital, Mr. Mechanics, Kepler's all the planetary motion, uh, the and every other rule that we found provable. We have the model because of the uh, the Asian astronomer, the Chinese, the Korean, and the Japanese astronomers of a segment of this orbit that gives us a elliptical path. This same object, when we overlay it into the 14 biblical accounts, these eyewitness accounts, we can build a model that follows the exact storyline, how Earth has slowed down, how the shadow went backwards, how do you get a three-hour eclipse during Yeshua's uh, sacrifice, how do you get three days of darkness during the exodus, and so on and so on. Fourteen. We have a model for... Fourteen yeah. biblical accounts. You have a model that matches how it, each thing could happen, and scientifically, it is proven it could have happened there has to be an object. God is using some type of an object, some type of a planet or something dark, something that can swing by and can create and can affect the earth in a way to create these 14 different biblical accounts. Uh, now, we, that, go ahead. Go ahead. We have a Nebra sky disk. Remember, this is just not also in the Bible. It's not only also in the Chinese. We have artifacts like this, the, the Nebra sky disk. It's made in Germany. It proves out the Earth tilted 26 to 28 degrees, and with the star pattern, it gives us gives us the exact date, and that date lines up mid of the drought of Joseph of Egypt. Wow. Remember when Joseph had a dream at age 16, the stars, the sky, and the moon bow to him. Yes, I well, do. That word sun is actually illuminated body because you can't see the stars out when the sun is out. So just like in Greek, helios simply means illuminated body. It doesn't necessarily mean a sun. Well. That was age 16. At age 40, the sky did by prove the sky. Uh, because your viewpoint from Earth would be the sky bowing. And the illuminated object is our is our comet-like planet. And and so unless people would like to say that the ancient German civilizations conspired with the Egyptian and the biblical accounts. Right. But yet they didn't know each other yet. No, they didn't know each other. They couldn't have conspired. All right, Gil, 
just because of time reasons, I got to move this along a little. Now that you've built a case that there's been 14 biblical accounts that could be scientifically proven that a planet of some sort on some type of orbit has affected the earth 14 times and you can match it with biblical accounts and it can and it makes sense. We now we're talking about the 6th and 7th seal. I've heard you talk about before in the book of Revelation. Something has to cause a mountain burning like a lamp to hit the earth. Is it a asteroid that's racing toward us? Has nothing to do with planet 7X? Or could se planet 7X be going by, going to be going by, bringing a, deb a debris trail that could cause earth to enter into that debris trail and have a cataclysmic collision? Now, that's what people want to know listening right now. That's why people are here right now listening. My question is, is where are you at with it now? I think you told me you believed, you believed scientifically everything you studied, don't have a crystal ball. But somewhere within an eight-year window, we should be having this event. And that this year seemed like to be the year that we would start to see it and we would have this some kind of an encounter next March or April in the spring. Where are you with that right now? How do you feel about that or what is your take on it? We're on the edge because we can see uh, if you, we can see possible economic collapse with the CO4 just about to happen. And there's a Middle East war brewing. We All right, now wait a minute. We may not see it at the end. Uh, uh, we, we may or may not see it at the end of December. But with, if not, then I would be looking for it in January because we're not that far off. But we have to see CO3, 4, and 5 happen. Right. Uh, three is economic collapse, four is a war, and three is, uh, I mean, CO5 is a peace agreement involving Israel in it. And that may happen uh, January 15th if this date is correct. And uh, Let's, I also wanted to point out to you. Okay. You can go ahead, Paul. Uh, well, I was going to say, if the date is correct, the three things, what you're saying is in the Bible, there's seven seals. You're saying seal number three would be an economic collapse. Seal number four is a Middle East war. Seal number five is a peace agreement involving Israel. And, it's, and it has to involve the whole world pretty well. And you're saying that if those three things happen, those are three, four, and five, um, and that could happen, you're saying, here in the next not very short. And the reason you say these things could happen, Gil, is because is it because man knows what's coming? Or is it because it's just the biblical prophecies that are leading us to seal six and seven? The biblical prophecies are reading more like a newspaper on a day-to-day -day event. Right. This is just, there's only one person that can tell time ahead of, and that is the Father. He gave it to Yeshua the gift of John. Yes. To, uh, to write this this book. There's no way that they could have guessed it. Just like Revelation 12, 1, where he gives us an astronomical date. I can tell you without a doubt, it is impossible 2,000 years ago, even if I would have given the software for them to better pick that date and match this. It's uh, that that date, the way they wrote it, can only it could come from the Father to be placed in that text. It's impossible. So you have to know the orbital mechanics. All right, impossible. now, Gil, if if for some reason that it isn't this December, it isn't this January, but that it we're off, we're close, we're close, but we're off a little. What is your take? Is could it be off just one year? Could we be right back in this situation next year, or are, or is it more like five years if we're off a little right now? I mean, can you can you help me with that? Well, the Bible clearly says that for a wicked and adulterous generation, we have only a sign of Jonah as a warning, which is 40 days. If March 26th is the date, then the, then, uh, the Bible says it qualifies that the earth would see it 40 days early. That's around March, I mean, uh, February 15th. Okay. I think that's only for an adulterous and wicked generation, not his people. I'm, I'm a firm believer that possibly we'll see it a month or so earlier than that. That'd be January. I gave an F. Right. I was giving an estimate for December, and I'm close, I believe. Okay. So but you... We may have to go into January before we would see it. Okay. So let's and go. Let's we'll just say... It. So you're saying, look, it could be that we will actually start to see this sign, the sign of Jonah, the sign of Planet 7X. Maybe we will see it sometime in mid-January, anytime between now and mid-January. And if we do, you'll get a real, a real naked eye view of it probably by February 15th leading us to the March 26th date, if this is the year uh, that the calculations have come together. Yeah. And that's... I mean, these, are, these are the signs that Yeshua said. You will see a sign in the heaven, and earthquakes will rise like the pains of a woman giving birth. We have both of those. Yeah. 
Oh, there's no disagreement. I mean, I have no dis. Uh, there's nobody can disagree with the fact that the Bible's prophecies of what would be happening in the end times in Matthew 24, in Mark, in Luke 21, Mark 13. We can see wars, rumors of wars, nation rising against nation, kingdoms against kingdoms, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, dire places, persecution of Christians going on all over the world. Uh, we can see that the, we're living in the fig tree generation. I mean, I don't think anybody, anyone that studies the scriptures know that we got it. We're in the ballpark. We're in the season. We're definitely in the season. So the question is now, if that's the case and we're seeing things come together, could it be that these seals will start breaking here in the next few months? Or could it be another seven years from now before they start breaking? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Economy, yeah. Uh, any 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 economist would tell you that it's, it's nearly impossible for our this economy to stand for that long. There, um, the vast majority of economists right now are shaking their heads right now. They don't understand why it's still up right now. I don't think we can go another year. Okay. And. Uh, and I wanted to show you something before we uh, exit out that's some new evidence okay. that I found in uh, Mauritania, Africa. There's a mountain range which was dissolved away. There's a crater that uh, that they, uh, they first thought was a meteor crater, but they came back and said, no, it, does, it isn't because there's, there's no signature of a con, uh, uh, site, which is a uh, crystalline form when a crater explodes, that this is not a, a meteor crater. Is this is this the pictures so you have, have here? Are, are, I mean, are we starting with this picture correct. here? Okay. Right. Uh, this is a plasma discharge crater. Plasma uh, discharge forms a flat area crater, and it dissolves mountains. This is about uh, 300 foot deep. Now, is it, you're right, saying... Right here in about... About 25 to 30 miles across. Now, you're saying, Gil, that this crater is actually in Africa, that, that, that this is the location where it hit? Something hit there? Yes. Uh, not uh, Yeah, a, a lightning bolt. This is the plasma discharge. Remember when Comet Siding Springs passed near Mars just yeah. recently? Yes, I do. We have a picture that's of page four. It shows when Comet Siding, which is a small little comet, it lit up Mars. Okay. Okay, I got it. I got it. this and is that, actual. That showed a plasma dis, uh, uh, discharge between the comet and Mars. Well, for this planet, 7X, I call it, for it to pass between the Moon and the Earth, they have to have been a discharge when Earth went through its tail, or whenever it got near near enough. We have a crater that signifies that. We can see the same type of craters on the Moon. If you look on page 10, you can see plasma craters, which the physicists have identified on Venus, Mars, and the Moon. But well, these three planets, planet 7X passes near them, and it made electrical discharge craters on them also, because they're not concave, they're flat bottoms. And that's the difference between a meteor crater and a plasma crater. I got it. So a plasma discharge crater, discharge crater. a plasma crater creates a flat what looks like a flat crater but it's not down deep into the earth it's just it's discharge it's a powerful hit of a bolt of, of plasma a crater from a from a meteorite will literally create a crater that goes down into the earth and it's quite obviously that something hit the earth that with with matter if you will uh you know so there's a different residue it leaves a different shape this is a flat crater compared to a deep crater, which means this was not a crater from a flying asteroid meteorite. This was a crater from a plasma discharge. And you're saying that the same thing happened on the moon when sl Comet Sliding uh, uh, sliding Spring went by, the, went by Mars. Excuse me. When it went by Mars, there was an explosion there. It's because it was a plasma discharge. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, and Correct. so I mean, you know, and I'm this, a, and this and and this crater because they cannot explain it because they don't have the the item that would you know scientists cause and effect. Well, we're already proven we have a planet that comes around here. Now, where is the the effect of a plasma this this uh, discharge? I found it. It's in Africa, right? That's 30, 25 to thirty miles across. That's a lightning bolt that hit the Earth between the two the two planets. Now, here's and, uh, what we here's, are going to see this again. Here's the plasma crater on Mars that Gil's talking about. When the comet sliding spring 
went by Mars, it released a plasma crater, a charge, a plasma charge. It created this crater. This is actual pictures from Mars of a crater. It's not, and the crater was caused by a plasma discharge. What, and what uh, Gil is saying is, in Africa, we have a, it's almost an identical plasma crater that looks just like the one that was on Mars, which means something went by that could release the same plasma discharge. And if that's the case, and we know that planet 7X, according to Gill, if his theory is correct, was, went by and caused 14 biblical events. If this just happened, which we got videotape of it, folks. As a matter of fact, he's got a still picture. I want to show it to you again. And I'm just trying to help everyone understand what... I'm in the wrong house. Um, yeah. Are you still there, Gil? I hear you. Okay. Somebody here? Yes, I'm sorry. I have to answer the door. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead while I get the picture of uh, the moon here. I mean, uh, Mars, this explosion here, and I have it right here. It is. All right, so what Gil is saying is this same crater in Africa created by something that went by the Earth and released a plasma discharge, that same crater is on Mars. That just in the last year, a that something went by Mars and released a plasma crater exactly like the one in Africa. Well, here's what we know was going by Mars then. The comet sliding spring. And this is actual still shots of there's Mars and there's the sliding spring uh, going by. And then there's Mars as the sliding spring gets this close and releases a charge. This is the actual footage. This is the still picture of what it looked like as that comet went by. So his point is this. If this has already happened, we've gotten, if this has happened about a year ago, is this planet on its way toward the Earth right now? And does NASA know it? Does our, does our governments of the world know it? Are they hiding it from us with this bending the light technology? Or is it just that, no, they don't know it, and it's about to happen anyway, um and um and what does that mean or they, you know whenever they review the bonus two video or a bonus one whichever i think it's bonus two uh we show we actually show the uh video of this uh um uh, this plasma this discharge the video of mars and comet siding springs effects and uh I, I sent you the video for you to take a look at as well um, is it on? Is I know it, a lot of. I know a lot of people out there are having difficulty uh, helping to convince family members that this uh, that the Bible is real and that uh, and that this event that's fixing to occur on Earth is going to be real. So we had a professional producer of a film produce a video, and um, that helps break the ice. It doesn't explain everything, but it helps break the ice of family members. And did you send that and, to me? Uh, did you send that to me, Gil, in the in my emails? Yes. Okay. Because yes. no, what? I have sent. I, I I sent you the DVD, and uh, it's a ma it's in the mail. To, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, you should have had it already. Uh, if they can go to my webpage, planet seven x dot net, and they can either download it or order the video. We have a, a two for one sale for the holiday. Okay. Uh, for people to give it to their pastors or give it to their other friends that may that need to know this. The rest of the videos to get educated on this is all free on my YouTube channel, Planet 7X. Okay. And they can see the stories of the Bible. But it helps. It's a, a the video to break the ice and explain it to where it opens the door for people to talk to people about it. And you know, I want to say this, folks. That Gil is saying is that we understand there were major, 14 major events in the, in the Bible historically that we already know has happened. We don't have to try to explain it to people because it already took place. The problem we have when you're talking the end days is trying to explain to people what we just read to you today, this, the breaking of these sixth and seventh seals when things are going to hit the earth. Even though Jesus said it was going to happen, as I've quoted a million times in the Gospels, even though John saw it in the book of Revelation, it's tough to try to explain that to family members who don't even believe, maybe, that the, that the world's ever going to come to an end. This is, you know, they don't understand. They don't believe. And so what Gil is trying to do is trying to help people understand 
that the Bible, and he's not predicting the day nor the hour. He's not predicting the day or the hour. He is scientifically analyzing what could possibly happen. But what he is saying is the events that the Bible prophesies to happen in Revelation is provable and is going to happen. We can prove it. We know it's going to. It's not a fairy tale. The book of Revelation is not something you throw on a, you know, throw it aside and say, I'm not, I don't worry about it. It is going to happen, and they need to know it is, and they need to give their lives to Jesus Christ, to Yeshua, to give their life to Christ, because we are living in the last days. And as Gil says, we may be living in the very, very last days uh, as time is running out. It may be sooner than any of us really understand or know. And that's what you're saying, right, Gil? Yes, but you remember in Revelation when it says the four angels hold back the wind? Yes, yes, well, I read that the only, the only way for the winds to be held back is if the rotation of the earth is stopped. Let me read that. Just like Joshua's long day. Let me read that, Gil. It's Revelation 7. It's in between the sixth and seventh seals. It says these words in Revelation 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Now, folks, that is impossible. The wind is always moving right now. It does not stop unless God says, I'm going to stop it. And he stops it by using uh, something. And what Gil is saying is it is scientifically possible that if planet 7X goes by, it what? could cause the wind to stop for a period of time, whatever that is. What? When Earth is entering the plasma tail, we will start to slow down four and a half to five and a half percent compounded hourly for the next 24 to 28 hours. And you have Earth stopping at that time period. You also have a 12 hour delay in Earth's rotation. You have 12 extra hours of night on the Jerusalem side and 12 extra hours of daylight on North and South America side. Remember where it says in the Bible, it says, I shall turn the day into darkness and, and, and night into day. It says that. It tells you, it, it tells you, and remember where he says come, he comes mid of night. Yep. Not midnight, but mid of night, mid of a 24-hour period. Uh, that meant Jerusalem is on the nighttime side. Wow. And the, the uh, scientists are going to get this wrong because they don't have a model that shows the earth slowing down by 12 hours. We only have a biblical model, and they're not going to advertise that in public. No, and they're not going to believe the biblical model. They're trying. They're not going to believe the biblical model. Uh, but scientifically, the biblical model can happen. There is a scientific way for it to happen. The greatest scientist, folks, of all time is the Creator Himself. He is the master mathematician. He is the greatest uh, physicist. He is the greatest. Uh, you know scientist there is he created everything from nothing you have to understand gil i gotta let you go again your web your, your youtube channel is planet 7x and again where's your website at again planet 7x.net planet 7x.net that is real easy planet 7x.net gil i'm gonna have you back on here again as we continue to watch this here in the next uh few months here as we're closing in on that March 26th date. We should know more about it. You're saying maybe mid-January, mid-February, we may know a lot, a lot more about whether or not this is the year that, in your theory, the Planet 7X theory, that we may be seeing this planet with the naked eye. We, we need to be attentive and look. We know what to look for now. This is a sign of Jonah, yep. and his people who are attentive will see it before the government announces it. All right, brother. Yep. Appreciate you coming on, Gil. I really do. It's fascinating stuff. Great stuff. Great work you do. Tremendous work you do. I respect it greatly. Thank you, Paul. And it's been a pleasure on your show. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Gil. And so, again, folks, you have to, you know, I, Gil's not saying this is the year. He believes strongly that this has a high probability of being the year. And that's why he looks at the economic collapse. He looks at the Middle East chaos. Look at the chaos in Iraq and Syria. Look at the, the, really, we're on the brink of World War III with Turkey and Russia and Russia and Ukraine and the United States backing out and the inconsistencies of the Obama administration, the Arab Spring four years ago. Look at the economy. Look at the, the, the literally, the, the, the volatility, volatility of the currencies of the world. And you hear world leaders talking about a new world order, a one world government, a one world currency. I mean, I mean literally, folks, and look at the cultural breakdown of the world 
our cultures are collapsing. And look at ISIS, how they're not just running around in the land of the Babylon, in the Babylon prophecy, but it, this is like an, a mold. It's like an infection. It's spreading the world. It's, it's destroying. It's putting fear in, in America, in the Western nations, in Europe, uh, France, Germany, England, Australia, everywhere, Canada, people are afraid of this growing thing called ISIS, this radical Islamic jihadist, yet we have world leaders that won't even mention it, won't even say the word. I mean, it's insane what we're witnessing. And we got Israel being completely surrounded by armies, which Jesus said would happen in the Bible in Luke 21 when he says, when you see Jerusalem compassed about armies, know that the, that the desolation thereof is nigh, for these are the days of vengeance. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but is this the year Planet 7X? This is Gil's turn, Planet 7X. Is this the year that swings by? Is that what's, is it about ready to happen or is it another year away? Is it another seven years away? Is it another 17 years away? I don't know. I can say this. We, the things that this Bible says is going to happen is going to happen. I can't myself scientifically figure out what makes it happen. I'm getting a better feel of it. I mean, I'm very interested in this stuff, but at the same time, I don't know if that's what makes it happen, but I know it's going to happen and I can see the signs leading up to it happening. And so I'm not a skeptic on whether the Bible will come to pass. I'm a total believer in the Word of God coming to pass. I absolutely know it's coming to pass, and it may come happen. Uh, and, and guys like Gil Brizard may have figured out what helps make it happen, but at the same time, nobody can stop it from happening. Nothing can change the infallible Word of God. Not even Lucifer himself, who would love to cause God to lie. For if he could get God to tell one lie, it would stop the prophetic track that we're on. It would prevent him from spending eternity in a lake of fire. If he could stop one prophecy, he could stop all prophecy. And he knows it. And that's why he fights tooth and nail to the bitter end. 84 years. It's in that ballpark as it swings by, but it's coming at an oblong orbit. Is that correct, Gil? Correct. It has a, it's a erratic orbit because there's too many things that are it's influencing its orbital uh, speed because it can run into moons or other planets that's why Ceres was destroyed that's why we had three days of darkness during the exodus instead of during yeshua's sacrifice we only had three hours of darkness during during a a um crucifixion during the eclipse now question any, oh, wait, any wait 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 anytime you see in the bible a double eclipse that can't be done in the natural right it has to it has to involve a third object okay now having said that you're saying that Planet 7X could have caused Hezekiah's son, uh, son to go back 10 steps. That Planet X could have came by and caused Joshua's longest day. You're saying that it, Planet X could have been the reason that we had three days of darkness during one of the plagues of Egypt during the Exodus, the time of Moses, before he could get the children of Israel out of Egypt. And you're saying that Planet 7X, also coming by again, but coming by on the other side, could have created a double a double eclipse which could have caused the earth to go dark for three hours when Christ was on the cross. And you went back and checked that against uh, statistical information or recorded data by ancient uh, civilizations in China and other places, and they confirmed something was going on in the sky during the exact same times of those four major biblical events. So it's not just a theory here. You're basing your theory of 7X on factual biblical accounts that, and scientifically, as an astronomer, you're saying, and it is doable, Paul, and here's how it's doable. If there is an object that keeps making its way around toward this earth, it always keeps, and each time it creates something. Like in Jonah's day, it created a sign in the heavens for 40 days. Jonah preached, hey, look, look at the sign. Nineveh, you're going to be destroyed in 40 days, okay? So each time you're saying this Planet 7X could create those events. Well, well Paul, let me quote a famous astrophysicist, okay. Neil De, it's a the Great Python, okay? okay? He said, this is how, this is science. He says, if you can take, observe phenomenon in space and show that it's repeatable in a model, he says, that is science. That means it's following the... Orbital, it's the mechanics, Kepler's all the planetary motion, uh, the and every other rule that we found provable. We have the model because of the uh, the Asian astronomer, the Chinese, the Korean, and the Japanese astronomer of a segment of this orbit that gives us a elliptical path. This same object 
when we overlaid into the 14 biblical accounts, these eyewitness accounts, we can build a model that follows the exact storyline, how Earth has slowed down, how the shadow went backwards, how do you get a three-hour eclipse during Yeshua's uh, sacrifice, how do you get three days of darkness during the Exodus, and so on and so on. Fourteen. We have a model for... Fourteen yes. biblical accounts. You have a model that matches how it, each thing could happen, and scientifically it is proven it could have happened there has to be an object god is using some type of an object some type of a planet or something dark something that can swing by and can create and can affect the earth in a way to create these 14 different biblical accounts uh now we, that, go ahead go ahead we have a neighbor sky disc remember this is just not also in the bible it's not only also in the chinese we have artificial